Hello guys, Deanna from Hot for History and I am here tonight to discuss with you whether or not Meghan Markle and Prince Harry actually wanted um, to leave the royal family in order to maintain more privacy because their first three episodes of their Netflix docuseries really does appear that they are trying to say, look, it was just too much in the UK. The press was incredibly insane and relentless with us and we want our privacy. But um, relentless with us, we want our privacy and we need to move, right? So then they actually ended up releasing a statement because they were very offended by the fact that people would think that they wanted privacy because that's not what they said. So I'm here tonight because I want to discuss with you whether or not they said what we thought they said and they meant what they thought they meant. Uh, Prince Harry basically never, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle say they did not step back over privacy complaints, privacy concerns, I'm sorry. So I, what I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to keep this brief. I want to read their statement way back in 2020 when they left the royal family. I'd like to read the statement now that their first, the first half of their Netflix series has been released. And then I want to also release the, I want to talk about the statement that the Queen made and Buckingham Palace made when they did leave. And then I also would like to discuss the new trailer because on Thursday, there, there, because there are three more episodes coming out. Many of us have seen one, two, and three, but we haven't seen four, five, and six. And there's a new trailer out, and we're going to review that as well. So there is Prince Harry and Meghan Markle said, this is a, an article out of the BBC, said that they didn't step back over privacy concerns. And now they have, they made a statement because they had so many critics saying so many things like, oh my gosh, this is awful. Why are they airing their dirty laundry, when they said that they wanted to leave the UK, they wanted to leave the royal family because they were more concerned with having privacy, right? So let's go through this article. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have said they never cited privacy as a reason for stepping back for, from royal life. So they never stated privacy. Like I thought it was about privacy. I think the media all thought it was about privacy, but there may be a difference between privacy and just wanting to be away from the UK and away from their responsibilities as royals. So there's that. Prince Harry and Meghan, um, there's their global press secretary said there was a distorted narrative that is mainstream out in the media that is saying, oh, if they wanted so much privacy, why did they go on Netflix? Why did they dive into the Hollywood life? Why did they start Spare that's going to be coming out, which, um, you know, oftentimes people are calling like, you know, Spare Me or whatever. So um, it follows, she says, it follows the suggestions with some other commentators that have said, um, the following, they basically have said uh, their decision to step back from their real life in January 2020 was announced in two coordinated statements. And he here's their statements. In their statement at the time, the Sussex has said, we now plan to balance our time between the United Kingdom and North America, continuing to honor our duty to the Queen, the Commonwealth, and our patronages. Now, remember that this was back in 2020. This was before the Oprah interview. So what they presented to the queen was, you know what? We wanna have a different type of life. We wanna be able to be both in the royal family and honor you, your majesty, and honor what you know our, our background is, but also have our freedom to make our own money, to live our own lives, um, and just, you know, do all of that. So that was the, the premise, but then the Oprah interview came and then all of these deals came through. The geographic balance will enable us to raise our son because that was before they had a little bit to the, uh, with an appreciation for the royal tradition into which he was born while also providing our family with the space to focus on the next chapter, including the launch of our new charitable entity. So they talk a lot about their charitable entity in the statement when they left the royal family, but they did not talk about any kind of plans to dive into media so strongly. Like, I, honestly, I'm not sure what the charitable entity is yet. Um, you guys may know, but I'm not sure what that is. Um, and it says at the same time, our the interpretation of their decision led to commentary suggesting press intrusion. Now they're 
entire Netflix series represents this like press intrusion. Everybody's talking about the press intrusion. Um, and it says infecti uh, that is affecting their then newborn son, Archie. And that may have been a factor as to why they wanted to leave because there was so much intrusion. Hold on a second. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm just seeing your comments now. Do you think Spare is going to be a flop um, or a bop? You know, all of these things, it's interesting because I think we don't talk enough about whether or not um, different ge geographic locations make an impact on their sales of their entertainment. And I think that Americans see this very differently, except for those of us who are maybe obsessed with the Royals, than the people in the UK. So it's very interesting. I feel that... Um, Prince Harry himself has been very Americanized in this, you know, like he is really trying to, you know, make the most of what he can over in America. So I don't know. I, I think, um, I don't know. I think it'll do okay. I think it'll be like moderate. So that's it. Security was their priority. This is Jules, not privacy. And I think that's really a good point to make because privacy is very different than security, right? So would, you know, Prince Harry being in line, and we'll, we'll address that when we look at the video of their next trailer where they talk about, you know, they weren't going to have their security. Um, so they were, in America, they can be kind of famous and not hounded all the time, especially when they're in Montecito. So um, yes, her. so I'm moving on to her mock curtsy, and then I'll finish this. It looked incredibly rude. You wouldn't mock bowing to the Japanese or Thai royals. That would be seen as offensive. I mean, I agree with that. I feel like um, the bow, like for some of us, we could just kind of laugh at that. Ha ha, that was kind of funny. But that would be like if maybe I was doing it, I had no connection to the royal family. And I was saying, oh, I met her for the first time. But when you become a royal, and that's part of the culture, and you know, to your point, it's a cultural diverse you know, tradition, right? So if you were in a part of Africa or if you were in a part of, you know, Thailand or whatever, you would try to respect that. Now, if you were married into that, you would also try to respect that. So um, I agree with you that the mock, that the mocking of the bow, I don't know if she really meant it that way. I said in another video that I did do think she was going for a joke with that, but I don't think, I think she was trying to be self-deprecating more and I think that's what it was. So um, I was under the impression that they had no privacy. And so they decided to leave. I, I do think that Megan, especially her coming into the royal family and during their marriage, like it was a lot. But I don't think it was as dramatic as they make it out to be. And I think that, um, well, none of us really have an idea of how we could live like that because it was, an, I'm sure it was intense. But I think it's to be expected. And then you kind of can make, you know, make plans. And some of it will heighten and kind of come down. I'm sure around their wedding, it was like that. Um, let me just answer a couple more questions, then I'll move on. They certainly are courting the press now. I actually think um, it is interesting to me, I was going to address this history boss. I love that name. I love anything with history in it. So I do think that it's fascinating to me that the queen and the royal family always have this motto that's never complain, never explain. And yet I'm going to read, you know, a little bit more of the statement. Harry and Meghan were really triggered by the fact that they're bringing up this privacy thing and they feel like they have to address it in a statement when there's all of these other things that they were criticized for in the first three episodes, especially the bow. And so I think it's fascinating that they were so triggered that they had to kind of come up with a statement. So let me just look at a couple more comments and then I'll move on. I think they left Megan to get back in the, um, in the actor UK. I think they were jealous of Catherine. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think that might've been a narrative that people wanted us to believe, but I don't know. You think that Megan and Harry might've been jealous? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I think people always, the press always wants to stir up division. Um, but I think if Harry and Meghan had decided to stay within the royal family, they could have found a way to kind of, you know, exist there in the UK, but they didn't choose that. So do you think this drama will be in future seasons of The Crown? <laughs> I don't know. That would be really interesting. Okay, so I'm going to read on because there were more things about this uh, statement. So 
The couple, um, press intrusion was this theme. Um, again, this is a BBC article. And since the release of the episodes and two minute long trailers, the trailers were interesting. And I'm gonna show you the next trailer for this Thursday, but some commentators cited the media suggested they have changed their tune on the subject of privacy. And I think whatever, I can't remember your name, when you said there's a difference between security and privacy, I actually agree with that. I do think that they, 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 there was more of a security thing than a privacy thing. And I think it makes sense that if they did leave, let's say it wasn't as much privacy, let's say they understood as royals from now on out. And then Megan is, you know, Megan and Harry are such a kind of dynamic, interesting couple that they understood that they're never going to have the privacy they wanted, but maybe they could control how much and in what context that privacy was. Although this particular docuseries, I don't know if you've all watched that, you know, kind of like stirs a lot of stuff up. So um, another critic responding to one of the trailers was quoted in a newspaper saying, they have blown out their own protestations out of the water and detonated their own privacy policy. Again, the media will stay on this privacy thing, not kind of getting a little bit more into the weeds as far, far as what it was. Um, and then their global press secretary, her name is Ashley Hansen. She said the Duke and Duchess have never cited privacy um, privacy as the reason for stepping back. The distorted narrative was intended to trap the couple into silence. Do you guys agree with that, that if you have this privacy statement that is going to, you know, kind of make you go silence, silent? I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm not so sure if I agree with that. So she, she continues and she says there's choosing to share their story on their terms and yet the tabloid media has created an entirely untrue narrative that permeates press coverage and public opinion. The facts are right in front of them. Okay, so here's the thing. The media will always create a narrative that we don't know. We have to admit, those of us sitting here on YouTube just kind of chiming in, we don't really know. But it's kind of like, couldn't they just leave it alone? Did they have to like go all into these comments? Because there's always narratives. There's always media and stories. So I do think it, it, it might have been, uh, there might have been some wisdom and hey, let's create our own narrative. Rather than dealing with like, everybody saying whatever they want to say, let's have our own narrative. And then that way, we can control this a little bit more, tell our own story, and let it fall where it's going to fall, let people believe what they want to believe. It's just, um, it's just a really sensitive place to to walk like i i had the opinion like because i kind of came into watching the first three episodes if you watched my last video i talked about 17 sort of like wtf cringy moments like i came in what i would consider i don't like to say hate watcher because i feel like i can see both sides but definitely a curiosity seeker and there were some parts of it that i was pleasantly surprised with and i am getting more sort of thoughts on the subject for example um you know, it is true that Harry and Meghan are being um, vilified through all this. They're being made the villains. And yet, in all honesty, it's not like they're Prince Andrew who's like selling out certain things for access to, let's say, the king, or they're not doing those things. Even King Charles has done some things that have been like, what? You know, like what's going on? So they are being made into these sort of like evil people. And if we try to open up our minds rather than, oh my gosh, why did they leave the royal family? There's this part of me that thinks Megan, Megan especially being so beautiful and unique and kind of a mixed race person in the UK, where the UK is definitely more blended than it's been ever, she could have done so much within the royal confines. However, if they know what their potential is, and yet they're limited, let's say, on a certain dowry or a certain, you know, budget or and they have to live in certain places, say certain things. Those of us who are Americans, I don't know if we could handle that. Right. I'm not a big fan of the fact that they left. I, there's this part of me, this idealistic, romantic part of myself that wants to feel like they could have done so much more by not leaving that. And yet history is not made of like, what do they say? Women who behave well. Right. So. So I'm very torn on it. I do think she lies a lot. I do think she has sort of a lot of these thoughts that are like, what was it really that bad? Like, 
I, I do feel that way about her, but I also can kind of see where they're coming from. And I see that maybe they're going to do something amazing in sort of stirring the pot in a way that will make people think differently about the royal family. So let me just take a look at a couple of other questions. And then I'm going to move on to the statement of the queen um, when Prince Harry and Meghan approached her about leaving. And then I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to read the statement from Buckingham Palace when they left at the time and then we're going to move on and we're going to review and look at the um the next trailer so um if you stay private you won't need that much of that is true um okay yeah and let's talk about the racism thing a little bit because it's always very triggering for when people get in fights so i don't want anybody to get in a fight um i think we all knew that there was there were racist undertones and racisms within racism within the royal family at some point. I mean, if you disagree, you disagree. But I think it's hard to refute that. Um, just to give you a little background on myself, I'm a mom of probably one of the most blended families. I have three children from Ethiopia, one from Guatemala, one from Ukraine. My husband was raised, he's an Ashkenazi Jew. I'm like pretty much all American. Like we have a very blended family. And being mixed race, being a mixed race kind of family, a blended family, you know, it has its challenges. And one of the things that Megan said that I really did like in her, um, you know, with, with the first three episodes is she says, nobody really teaches you how to be mixed race. And then, she, and then she actually said that she was actually surprised at the fact that the UK press brought up this whole you know, she's straight out of Compton, like they made her race and she's so fair skinned, like even on her driver's license, it says white, like, he, honestly, it was, they made it into such a big deal. And, but these are the ways of the future. Like this is not, and what a beautiful thing to represent the Royal family. Like I said, in a country now that is so mixed with so many different people from all over the world, like it is not as homogenized as it used to be. Right. So and then we know that there were some innuendos from Prince Philip regarding racism. We know that um, it was Princess Michael of Kent that wore the Blackamoor brooch, although some people say she may have been trying to, you know, honor Megan. <laughs> but even that's a little far fetched, like, let's wear the African brooch because, you know, I mean, it's just a, a, a little off. So there is that. And then there is the fact that, you know, it does need to be addressed. I do think we do need to talk about it a bit. So um, the video is glitching. In this is my first live on YouTube and I will work on getting better equipment. So she looks olive skin like a Spanish person. Um, yeah. So this dishwashing is story more times than I care to remember. I heard a young regarding the comparison about sexism. It was called there's her. Did you guys like her poem in the first three episodes? I really thought her poem was really, really great. I thought she wrote a really great poem, especially about divorce. So that was my opinion. All right. So let's talk about the statement from Her Majesty the Queen, which was January 18th of 2020, when uh, Meghan and Harry went to her and said, hey, we're done. Um, so it says, following many months of conversations and more recent discussions, I am pleased she says, I am pleased that together we have found a constructive and supportive um, way forward for my grandson and his family. She loved Harry. She loved him. Harry, Megan, and Archie will always be much loved members of my family. And then she goes on to say, I recognize the challenges they have experienced as a result of intense scrutiny over the last two years and support their wish for a more independent life. I want to thank them for all of the dedicated work across the country, the Commonwealth and beyond. And I'm particularly proud to, of how Megan has so um, quickly become one of the family. It is my whole family's hope that today's agreement allows them to start building a happy and peaceful new life. And then she ends with that. And I will go on to talk about what Buckingham Palace said in re, um, for, for Harry. So one thing I want to throw in there is that there are a lot of people who say, oh, my gosh, she didn't like that Megan was an actress. And I can't remember who had an article about this recently, but there was actually this guy who was like, he, he was saying, listen, um, Megan 
one of her first uh, appearances with the queen, the queen took her out, was this dedication to this theater because the queen actually told Megan not to quit her acting. Like, you know, she loved the idea of acting and she actually had said that she would have liked to be an actress and, you know, like she would have loved to have been an actress. And by the way, when she did Paddington Bear for her Platinum Jubilee, it was so sweet and so well done. So I will say that. Um, all right, so let me read this. If she didn't, I'm sorry that the video is glitching. Um, okay, so this is what Buckingham Palace said, and then I will move on. I'll try to get through this. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are grateful to Her Majesty and the Royal Family for their ongoing support as they embark on the next chapter of their lives. As agreed, in this new arrangement, they understand that they are required to step back from royal duties, including official military assignments appointments, they will no longer receive public funds for royal duties. With the Queen's blessing, the Sussex, Sussexes, <laughs> say that three times, will continue to maintain their private patronages and associations. While they can no longer formally represent the Queen, the Sussex, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, have made clear that everything they do will continue to uphold the values of Her Majesty. That is a question now with the first three episodes and probably the next three episodes. Okay, so the, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex will not use their HRH titles as they are no longer working members of the royal family. The, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have shared their wish to repay sovereign grant expenditure for the refurbishment of Frogmore Cottage, which will remain their UK family home. Buckingham Palace does not comment on the details of security arrangements they are well-established, independent processes to determine the need for publicly funded security. The new model will take an effect in the spring of 2020. So this was before the Oprah interview, and they basically are kind of giving them their blessing. Go on. It's fine. You can move on. Um, but uh, things changed. Things did change. So did you guys notice that things changed? Um, and so I think that was a nice way of putting it, like they're moving on. And I will say in defense of Megan and Harry, I can imagine that, you know, she was sort of, when you're an actor or an actress, you know, some of us who have been in the, in the arts for a long time, you're sort of, you're in the gig economy. You're always trying to make more money. So people, even multimillionaires will try to make more money. And she may have come into this going, Hey, Hey, you know, is this all you have? Like, are we allowed to try to, you know, run some more businesses and make some of our own money? And what if we want to live here? And what if we want to say that? Like, it may have been too restrictive for her. Again, I'm kind of a purist. I like the royal family. I don't like all of the things that they've done. But I will say that I can kind of see uh, things. And I think, and I've said this before in some of my shorts, if you guys haven't seen my shorts, watch, watch the shorts, um, is that it's easy to hate on Megan. Like I'm not a huge fan of hers, but I think we deflect off of Harry because he's so likable. He's like one of these guys where you're like, I want to really like him. So let's like make his wife the enemy. And the truth is, is that he could have stood, he knew his family. He could have stood a little bit stronger on saying to her, look, there's a way for us to get all of these things let's negotiate because in the next trailer she says something or at least i have heard of a statement where she said this was a battle between a family and a family business but it's still a family so and it's still a bit and it is a business so she they could have negotiated their way within the family and i kind of put that back on harry because megan did say well i was still just trying to learn things i do think she plays naive a lot when i don't think she is i'm curious to hear if you guys like hate Megan, you know, how do you feel like, you know, how do you feel toward her? Um, I, I think um, she's not as evil as people make her out to be, especially the UK um, press. But I also don't think she's as uh, innocent as she kind of makes out to be either. I think that there's a, told, a story in between. Um, I do think that on Thursday, we're all going to see something that could be really intense because he mentions William in it. So I'm going to pull up guys this. I'm going to do a screen share. Just give me one second of um, I'm going to do a screen share of the of the um, trailer. And I'm really curious to hear what you guys are going to say about this. Let's start this trailer. 
wonder what would have happened to us had we not got out when we did. Our security was being pulled. Everyone in the world knew where we were. I said, we need to get out of here. Okay, so right there, they're establishing this aspect of what we now know is not about privacy, it's about security. And, but this is my problem with a lot of this. It always is so scary. Like they make it out to be so, so bad. And one of my things with their first, the first three series, three episodes was I felt like they didn't establish a much or enough the problem. Like, is it really such a huge problem? Like, you know, is it a major problem, you know, with, you know, what they're saying? So hold on, let me see so you can see this better. Okay. Um, so it sounds really intense and all good. The video is cutting in and out, not your fault. Thank you for being so patient, by the way. And I will improve this. This is my first live on my channel. Okay. We are on the freedom flight to see this institutional gaslighting. Okay. I'm sorry, but I need to comment it because I can't just run the whole thing totally. A freedom flight. Like he may honestly feel so free because look, we're doing something different. I'm going to have this beautiful new home. My family's going to be able to not have people hounding me all the time. This is a, we're going to do new things. We're going to do things that are different. Let's get the heck out of this because honestly, it, I think it could probably feel like a prison. Like you're stuck in this, like, we don't know, like, cause we could almost do anything we want in America. We may not have what Harry's inheritance was, but like, he didn't have that freedom and neither did Megan. And Megan was coming from a place where she, the sky was the limit. She could have done anything. And now she's marrying this guy that she falls in love with. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, you, we can't even do that. Like we can't really say what we want, you know, and do what we want to do. We have to stay within, we have to ask for where we're going to live and what we're going to do. So I do believe there, that's a true statement. I wonder about the gaslighting though. Cause I think that they gaslight a lot too. I think that they, you know, try to say things that sound like gaslighting. So just, tit for tat. That's my opinion. But I wasn't being thrown to the wolves. I was being fed to the wolves. They were actively recruiting people to disseminate disinformation. They were happy to lie to protect my brother. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot there. Okay. First things first. Um, they were trying to disseminate information there. Do you guys feel, I really want your opinion that the scrutiny over Harry and Megan was like tenfold compared to Kate and William. And if you agree with that, is that because they're trying to like show that they want to be free more or that they just, you know, are more, let's say talkative. Um, and then that statement he just made is a little preview to what I think is going to go down next week in the media. This little statement here regarding Will, especially like him going after Will and Kate, because they're so beloved, is not going to roll very well in the UK. I'm just saying. So the second he threw, this is what Daniel says. The second he threw his brother under the bus with that line, I knew the second part will be real and he will not be holding back. <laughs> AKA, I can't wait. Oh my gosh. I know it is sort of like watching. Um, I mean, it's, there's an aspect of it that's fun. And, you know, I kind of sound a little bit like wishy-washy in some respect because I'm so like into the Royal family, but I also am starting to kind of see what they were trying to do. Because if you, if you think like, how does like if somebody wants to do something different with their influence in America, people do things with their influence and their brand all the time, but it's so taboo for a Royal to do that. And yet how does the, how does the Royal family really change unless somebody does something totally radical, right? So there's one part of this where the queen dies, King Charles is, you know, now the king and all, and the king has always talked about how he wants a more modern, a more different, um, a more evolving uh, monarchy. And it's interesting because in some ways, Meghan and Harry are actually pressing that narrative without knowing it. And they're appearing to be bat battling against each other. And yet maybe what they're bringing out is actually going to force 
you know, the king to have to kind of look at that. If you, I hope you guys are following me. So, okay. Uh, Megan was almost 30 years old when she married. She is a grown woman, yet she behaves like she's 15. Um, her ex on the Ellen show. I do think that Megan, um, there's like two sides of her. There's that side that doesn't really use judgment as well as she should. Like that bow. I'm sorry. Somebody should have edited that out as a producer. I'm like, uh-uh, take that one out. Um, she could have talked about the curtsies, but not uh, done done that. So I do think that there are times when she, that they don't think, and then their producers or the their, I don't know, press around them, they don't think either. So I agree with you on that. Um, okay, so let's go on. They were never willing to tell the truth to protect us. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. The rogue royals. They just wanted to be free. They wanted to be free to love and be happy. I applauded that. Okay, so they keep saying that they didn't tell the truth. The people didn't tell the truth. The media didn't tell the truth. Um, and then they had to just get away because the media wasn't telling the truth. The media's never told the truth. We all know that. And so it's part and parcel of coming into, I guess, what they were coming into. Um, I love Tyler Perry. He's always been one of my favorites. But personally, I feel like they make this out to be so, so much more dramatic than what we all witnessed. And I say this in one of my videos, I said, we don't know what the real big problem is. And you guys tell me how you feel like, do you like, I am interested, like Daniel had just mentioned, like, I cannot wait to watch, but at the same time, I don't really know if I really, it's like, I mentioned rich people problems in the last video that I did, because I don't feel like this is as heavy as they're making it out to be. It's interesting. We all kind of want to watch like, Ooh, are they going to create a drama? Like, but I don't think that it's really as much of a problem as they make it out to be. And so, um, I feel like they're making more out of it than it is, but you know, that's entertainment for you, I guess. So, okay. So let's, let me see. I love Megan and Harry. Um, she comes across immature. Okay. Yes. I agree with Meg. Mega, the family is racist and not good people. There's, there's been some, I do think, like I mentioned before, that sometimes it's like they're pointing the finger at them and vilifying them. And yet they have to remember that they have Andrew in the family. Sorry. And even King Charles had done some things recently, and yet he's going to be crowned king. So there, there's hypocrisy on the royal end, too. All right, let's watch the rest of this, and then we will call it a night. In order for us to be able to move to the next chapter, you got to finish the first chapter. It gave us a chance to create that home that we had always wanted. I've always felt as though this was a fight worth fighting for. Okay, all of that's amazing. Um, how do you guys feel about, like, I love the family shots. I'm totally, like, I am so, um, I like the family shots. I'm sold on it. And I expect that King Charles is supportive. It's possible. Um, I love the family shots. And I agree that people don't like her because she's strong, independent. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I don't think they've had anybody quite like quite like Megan. And yet I don't even feel like we've really heard her voice much. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we will we will we will see. And regarding Harry, OK, I want to talk about him, about him sort of enjoying himself so much in this life that he has created for himself. And I think we all love seeing that because we know a little bit about his history. I also love the evolution of Harry as being in this guy who was just so sort of this wild kid in, um, well, that's how they presented him to be, where he was like, you know, unfortunately wearing Nazi things on his arm, making rach racial slurs. And then he had to go into like, you know, making amends by going and hanging out with a rabbi and then dealing with his racism. And then he marries a woman and dives into what this really means. And he talks about unconscious um, racist bias, I think racial bias in the family. So he's the one bringing it up. And then I also love the fact that he's just sort of living this life. It's almost like he escaped for some, from something that nobody else, you know, was able to escape from. And then, but I do think and you guys tell me if you think this, 
that he and I rightfully so, rightfully so, went through so much crap in losing his mom, having to stand behind that casket, which was a total mistake, probably never having grief counseling. And I'm going to be honest, probably never having true mentorship because he was, you know, sent off to school. And so never having the real men mentorship that he needed. And then all of a sudden he marries this woman and he's in the middle of all of this press. So this is my, you know, what do they call it? Couch, couch psychology coming up. I do think that some of the reason why some of us go, what is the real problem? Like it, why does, why do they make it out to be so big and there's complaining and whining and you know, all that. Some of us feel that way. It's like, really? Um, sometimes I feel that way. Other times I don't. I think it is really intense for him. And I think it's really intense for him because he feels it so at a, such a deep level, this whole press thing, privacy, security, because he lost the greatest woman of his life already. And he mentions that a little bit, like, I didn't want that to happen again. And so the drama and like, he talks about gaslighting, but I feel like they're gaslighting and projecting as well is because of a real true deep seated pain and struggle that's inside of him that may not have totally been reconciled and expressed. And then I would probably also project it onto the Royal family. You made me stand behind my mom's casket. You made me do this. You made me do that. Now we're free to live my own life. And I found a woman that I love and that's what I'm going to do. So that's all I got guys. And so let me just look at a couple more questions. Um, I will to be a part of the royal family you cannot yeah you can, oh yeah the, the whole pda thing i saw i got a clip of kate and will at the um earth shot event with his hand on the back the other thing that i found a little bit hypocritical was after the funeral uh harry and megan were holding hands and it was like normal like you're he's at his grandmother's funeral so hold hands and zara and mike also held hands but all of this press came out about, oh my gosh, how inappropriate for Megan and Harry to be holding hands. They didn't talk about Zara and Mike. They're also holding hands. So I'm just saying, and yeah, I think they both probably did have difficult childhoods. I like that they brought up the divorce thing. I'm also a child of divorce and that really hit a nerve for me. Um, and it just does go to show that no matter what background you're at, that that could bother you. Um, another issue has hidden so much to save face and Harry and Megan are just telling the truth. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to go big or go home. And I think that's what they're doing. I, I just, I still am like in the middle, like I'm in the middle, who's in the middle, who's, who's, I don't know. I feel, and I mentioned this, I feel like America, Americans have an easier way to embrace them. I feel like they're going to be well embraced in America and they're going to have a great future for whatever media they want to produce she clearly like after reading listening to her poem she probably is a decent writer um i think they'll have a decent future here i think it'll be very difficult to go back and we'll just see so guys thank you for being here on my first live for hot for history please subscribe and follow. I am going to be putting out longer videos. I do history videos. I do, I'm just learning more about the royal family now. I also am restoring an old family home in the Midwest. That's how I started with this whole channel is that I bought my great grandparents family home. It's a great, great story. I'm about to head back there. And so we talk about that history too. And please subscribe. I will come back with some more lives. Let's, let's, talk about this after they release um their next three episodes i'll talk to you i'll go live again on thursday so anyhow have a great night guys thank you so much and we will talk to you soon bye